T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 5, 10, 3, 4. You're listening to the Twisted 10, bringing you original and unique host created top 10 lists recorded live in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Poston. All right, well, welcome to the Twisted 10, <clears throat> the show where we uh, come up with a unique top 10 list of whatever it is that we want to discuss and run through the list. I'm your host, Tack, and with me, as always, across from me is... Trustworthy Adam. I don't like that catchphrase. Uh, fabulous Adam. I don't like that one either. That's not good. Magnificent Adam? No. Mad. Let's just go with Adam. Let's go with Adam. All right, that'll work. I look like an Adam. <laughs> we have Adam. And so, every week, we come up with a unique list that each of us, we take turns hosting an episode and the other one does not have any clue on what list we are bringing to the table. Yeah, that's kind of the fun part about it is that the other guy doesn't have a clue. And we're, we're going to have some guest hosts in here as well for giving giving bringing their top 10 list that they come up with on their own. Now, these the, the unique part about this is they're not like BuzzFeed top 10s so or they're not, no. you know, uh, top 10.com or what, you know, none of that shit. They are created by the hosts surprising the other hosts on the show and hopefully entertaining somebody out there to listen to you know what we find interesting and no gambit of topics it's any anything you want to come up with anything any, goes no holds barred exactly yep and this is uh, episode three and so with this episode with this list i brought today oh, i really boy. don't know what to call the list um i thought i had a name for it but then it kind of jumped around but to give you an example uh Here's just a sample one, Adam. Okay. This is, is this part of the 10? It's not going to be part of the 10. Not going to be part of the 10. Okay. Because I actually have more than 10 here, but I decided to have more here just to, so I can pick and choose. Okay. Um, all right. So you've heard that this is just an example one. Okay. That people use, uh, um, we only use 10% of our brain. Yeah. And which that actually is not true at right. all. You know, so right. we it's actually a, use 100% of our brain. Yeah, just the 10% that happens to be monitored while they're doing, yeah, doing that. <laughs> or it's how thing. we choose to use it. <laughs> others seem to use it a little bit better than others. <laughs> um, so that's an example. This is like, I don't know what you call these, like facts that we think are true but aren't. Um, urban legends, maybe? I guess maybe I, not I, urban legends. I, yeah, see, I fought with this when I was making the list, too. I was like... Okay, these are like urban legends that aren't true. I'm like, well, some of these aren't really urban legends, you know. And then hmm. I was like, well, they're facts that are they around anything in particular, like the brain, like neuroscience studies, or is it no. just kind of a wide it's, array? Yeah, it's a wide array. It's, it's going to have to be urban legends then, because it's it's if it's something that's <laughs> massively believed uh, to be true and then proven false, um, urban le huh? urban legends does kind of lead into another. You know, uh, another genre of topic. It's not right. so much about. A couple of these are actually, they are in fact urban legends. Some of these are. So let's just go with the top 10 things you thought were true, but guess what? They aren't. All right. All right. Sounds good to <laughs> me. Right. Cool. I named your show, buddy. How <laughs> good do you, job. How do you like that shit? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> all right. So this is in no particular order. These aren't in any particular order at all. Okay. Um, but first off, how are things with you? Dude, I can't complain. You know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's another week. I'm, uh, enjoying it. Uh, doing good. Our studio is going to get a little bit of revamp in here pretty soon. So we're going to have oh, yeah. a little bit, a little bit nicer digs. So, uh, yeah, it's, that's exciting. It's going good. I like my new seat, by the way. Yeah. You're sporting it over there on a nice couch tonight. Nice couch tonight. I mean, it's not new. It's always been here. I just never sat over here. Yeah. I guess that's a good point. Yeah. It's nice. No, I man, I can't complain. Hey, work's going pretty good. I'm working. I guess that's kind of an important thing to stay, say in these days. Yes. That's maybe like, Hey, could one of your topics be the number, the level of unemployment? A lot of people think it's 5% as the administration that we currently are under is claiming, <laughs> but really, 95 million Americans aren't working. Granted, some of those are too old to work, but there's some all. Some of them refuse to work, so. Th there's a, yeah, but they fall out of that demographic. So 5% is what unemployment rate is right now, or maybe it's like five and a half or something. So these are people that want to work that just aren't working. Well, people who cannot be hired, if, let's say, for example, if you get fired tomorrow, then I'm not yep. wishing that, but if you get fired tomorrow, 
and you're on unemployment for six months. What'd you hear? <laughs> you know something? <laughs> now, if you're looking for a job for like six months and you can't find anything and the economy sucks and, you know, your profession is just, you know, overrun in this area, whatever the case is, yep. let's say you can't find employment and you stay on your unemployment benefit for that whole time. At the end of six months, you fall off of the national demographic of unemployed. You're no longer unemployed. You're considered unemployable. So the 5% Ooh. rate changes after your six month period. So how that whole statistic works is fucking political. There is far more yeah. people that are unemployed drawing benefits off of the government for unemployment than what the government actually claims is listed as unemployed. Gotcha. So it's a horrible misuse of a statistic. And the administration that we're under right now is the worst about it out there. I mean, the worst. Hmm. But whatever. That's political opinions aside. <laughs> right. A statistical fact is a statistical fact. That's cool. That many Americans aren't working. That's not 5%, buddy. That's like 18% or something. It's, it's a giant number of people between, you know, the ages of workable age yeah. who are drawing benefits versus who've only been unemployed for six months. So Interesting. I had no idea. Um, yeah. I've never actually ever drawn unemployment before. Um, I've always cashed out. So when I lost my job, I cashed out my 401k. And that was enough to carry me for a little bit of time. I did, I've never not worked since I was 18 for more yeah. than, I don't know, maybe two months, I guess. Right. Maybe, if that. Yeah, if I was ever unemployed and I needed money, I just went and got a job. Yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> I mean, it's not the... I mean, yeah, no, I got you. Some people are employable only in certain industries. Right. Uh, therefore, they can only find that certain job, whereas me, fucking whatever, man, you going to give me money to do that? I'll do it. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I've taken jobs I probably shouldn't have that I was extremely overqualified for. Yeah, you're, you're stint in the mafia. I remember that. Granted, they, they <laughs> yeah. paid you legitimately, and then, you know, they yeah, well, 1099 you. Know. you. <laughs> That's true. Do you get to claim your? Or are you supposed to claim your tips for a for a good hit? Uh, well, we can't really disclose it right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have the fucking Tony. Yeah, yeah. Am I gonna have the Titusville Mafia come knocking on my door? <laughs> yeah, you old TM. Yeah, <laughs> TM boys come banging down the door. But uh, everything else good with you? Yeah, good. Yeah, dude, good. I can't complain. Met a new girl. I've uh, been dating her now for. I don't know, maybe about a month. I don't know if I talked to her, talked to you about her on Twisted Ten yet, but uh, yeah, she's she's a pretty cool chick, and things are going real well. So I can't complain. Adam is no longer considered single. So I learned this on one of the other shows that we host. Yeah. I learned that the title single it doesn't really apply to me. I am now <laughs> no, it doesn't. taken, I guess, or FBO, FBO, or I don't know, whatever they want to call it. I'm not married, <laughs> but I'm not single. No. I fuck, who knows? Who knows? The way uh, the late Mitch Hedberg, God rest his soul, uh, once put it. Um, I am, uh, I'm single, but how did he word it? Shit. It was something You're fucking like, up this quote, aren't you? <laughs> it was something like, uh, uh, I'm not dating anybody, but I know a girl who would get really pissed if she heard me say that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, something like that. I'm not married, but I know a girl who would hate it if I said single. Yes. <laughs> something like that. That's exactly what I meant. This girl, <laughs> this girl's for the long haul though, dude. I can already tell. Nah, nah. She, she's, she's a good shit. How about you? <laughs> Nah, man, just single, man, single. You're just slaying it, aren't you? I know, I know. Look, Tack, no. you, you don't have to be, you know, what's the word? Uh, 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 conscientious, no, moral, no, uh, whatever. I know what you're, what you're doing. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, me and you, we, we understand. We see eye to eye. I get it. It's true. And for more information on uh, relationships, check out <laughs> Living Picariously. <laughs> yes. Yep, I think we talked on episode two about that a little bit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so are you ready to get in this? Yeah, dude. Let's All do right. it. Okay, so we'll start small and then work our way up. Uh, something very simple. All um, right. Okay, have you heard, like, the whole – remember when we were back in school, elementary school? Sure. Um, and we were taught that our tongues had taste bud regions. Where you had like salty over here, sweet over here, bitter back there. I don't necessarily think it was only in elementary school. I think I would still have – Maybe heard that on a TV show or something. Right, right. But that's when we were actually taught it. You okay. Know? But it's actually not true. You actually have taste buds all over your tongue, and they, you can taste every kind of flavor everywhere. So, really? Yeah. Um, I don't have too much to go into about that one because oh. I didn't really think it was too much. No, the, well, they say t- so. Taste buds, just like it. everything else, die with age. So, like your the cilia in your ear for for where sound waves are captured and transferred into you know brain waves for you to be able to understand. Uh, die over time. So you start to go deaf as the older that you get. Same thing with taste buds. Your taste buds start to go. So not necessarily regions of the tongue, but as people age, 
their types of flavors of food that they really like certainly change. So I don't know if you've ever seen old, you know, maybe people that have been working in uh, coal mines or something like that who've had uh, damage to their sinuses and to their system because that all affects your taste buds really like the spicy food. And maybe older guys, maybe 60 or something like that, really love that spicy food yeah. well, or that really love that sweet or that savory or that salty flavors. Yeah. Well, that's because that's the only taste buds that they have anymore. Those Because those are the most potent flavors is the spice or the savory or the mm. salty. You know, they can't tell the difference between a peach and a strawberry, for example. They can't tell it other than texture. So when you get those really salty or really, you know, really strong capsaicin and loaded peppers, then they can taste that because it's so, you know, it's so different to them. That's where they taste the flavors. So no, dude, that makes sense. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Interesting. So I didn't know that. Does, does that count when I'm going down on a, <laughs> on an ice cream cone? What the fuck were you thinking? I was going to say, <laughs> Dak, you're, you're giggling over there before I even got it out. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> And uh, we'll go ahead and stick with a the theme here. Um, All right. Ice cream. Got it. <laughs> well, sugar. Oh. Um, you know how, remember how, like, uh, with uh, kids, they get a bunch of sugar and they're just like, Bruh! Yeah, sugar, that high. sugar high. That's the sugar rush. Yeah, that's the stereotype for don't feed kids sugar before going to bed. <laughs> right. Well, apparently it's all a myth. Or it's not a myth. It's not true. It's a strictly a placebo. And uh, there's no such thing as a sugar rush. Or anything, they've actually done scientific testing. Well, wait a minute, because people with low blood sugar levels have immediate, Im- I mean, absolutely immediate reactions when that sugar turn, you know, hits their system and glucose is in their system. Or so I don't know the, how it actually. I don't works. know all the science either, but they they did somebody did a test somewhere, some science experiment where they took a bunch of kids and then they gave a group sugar free soda or something and another group regular soda, and they were said. Just monitor your children. Let us know how they behave, you know. Huh. And then a lot of the parents with the sugar-free kids were just like, what did you give them? They're bouncing off the walls. And, you know, <laughs> they're like, uh, well, they had sugar-free. You know, there wasn't, you know, any scientific proof proving any kind of sugar rush or sugar. That's interesting. Or anything at all. Huh. What was, well, I want, I want to ask your source on that because that's, that one's difficult for me to believe because I've raised four children now and, I mean, I have one and one of my exes has three. I don't want, you know, I'm not the, I, I've seen, you know, what I can perceive as a very serious effect on high amounts of sugar, like in a monster energy drink or something versus, you know, water or standard sodas or maybe not even standard soda, standard drinks, milk or whatever. I see a very serious difference between the two of them. Yeah. I mean, I could see like, um, well, no, well, let's not confuse it with caffeine either. That's a good point. Um, because I was going to say, well, I've had like a bunch of coffee and felt my heart, drrr, you know, but that thing is caffeine. That's not sugar. Um, so I don't know. Maybe it's something to look back into, but I've found that in several things I was um, looking into when I was putting this list together, that one kept popping up all over the place every time I was doing research for this list. The sugar doesn't actually provide in- immediate energy for like a sugar rush or a sugar yeah, high or anything sugar like that. Sugar rush is a complete false. You know, I'm kind of leaning up more towards your side now because when I go to bed sometimes, I absolutely love slamming a Mountain Dew or a Coke or something like that before going to bed and it doesn't affect my sleep ha- habits me at either. all. Like caffeine, I don't think caffeine really has an effect on me unless I have a lot of it. Huh. I can drink like probably a six pack of soda and go straight to sleep. You know. So sugar high is a false. False. Okay. Let's stick with the sweet. That was uh, number nine. So this is going to be number eight? Yeah, number eight. All right. Let's go ahead and stick with the same theme as far as sweets go. Um, okay. And this is ten things that you thought were true but really aren't. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ten things you think are true, not so much. All right. This probably falls. Well, let's go ahead and ask you. Halloween. Okay. Your kid goes out. Are it's you going to tell candy. me it's not really in October? It's not no, really kidding. in October. <laughs> no. Um, Halloween, your kids go out. They get a bunch of candy. You bring them back home. They say, can we eat our candy now? No, nah, man. You got to check it for razor blades and drugs. Razor blades, drugs, 
needles and all that kind of shit. Really, right? what that's the parents' excuse to take the good candies out and <laughs> take them for themselves. Give me, give me some of them Hershey's Kisses or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you gotta check it. And me as a parent, I always do too. I always want yeah. to check it, you know, because no, it's not so much because that's what our parents did, but whatever. You just always do. And uh, well, the the truth of the matter is the old ur- urban legend. Like this one is an urban legend. There's never been a case of finding razor blades, needles, or anything poisonous in any Halloween camp. Never been documented, Ever. huh? Never. Huh. There was one case where back in 1974, this little kid died with cyanide poisoning in a pixie stick, but that was from his own father, and that was for insurance money. It had nothing to do with Halloween, though. Oh, well, that makes sense. So, That's logical. Right. Hey, that makes Bastard. sense. Bastard. <laughs> that makes sense. But there's never been any documented case of any kind of razor blades, needles, and candy ever, ever. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. I've so, seen some I've seen some Don't parents. be afraid. Halloween, eat it up. <laughs> I've seen some parents uh give out some, some to my kids some really fucking bizarre things at, at Halloween, like little bags of carrots. <laughs> and I, I look at the guy. I'm like, dude, fuck are you? You got a five year old dressed like, you know, a teenage mutant ninja turtle or something sitting on your doorstep and you're giving him carrots. You understand what this night is, right? I understand you're trying to promote a healthy alternative for candy and sugar and sweets. I got it. What are you, you're going to independently fight obesity in children, but come on, man. <laughs> Fucking I'm carrots. He didn't, he didn't want kids next year. I think that's what it is. Now, Nobody come to his house next I, year. I really think maybe he wanted to do the trick or treat fashion. You know, give me a treat. If you don't, I'm going to trick you. So <laughs> shit on his doorstep next time is what I'm going to do. Maybe. <laughs> Fucking Have you ever seen these people that give away, uh, like bags of pennies or Wait some a minute. people even give away like Bible verses? Look, I'm like not that. stereotypical Jewish here, but if somebody's <laughs> giving away some money, I don't care if it's <laughs> copper covered or not. I'd take it. I'd be all right with that. <laughs> throw me a, throw me a hundred pennies and I'll, I'll be thanking you. That'd be okay. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Number seven. Number seven, the top ten things you thought were true but really aren't. Aren't. Got it. Okay, so everybody's got this buddy, right? This buddy that's done everything, right? The one-up guy? <laughs> the one-up guy. If you fucked a football, he's fucked four. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, He's also the same guy that used to talk about back when I was in Ohio, <laughs> I used to fucking go cow tipping. You've heard that yeah. story? You know that guy? Well, the guy's a fucking liar. Because <laughs> cow tipping is not real. <laughs> nobody's ever been cow tipping ever. I'm not saying nobody's attempted it. Right. Attempting it's one thing. Attempting but is one thing. Isn't it? Doesn't a cow, isn't this, doesn't this stem from how cows actually sleep? It, yes, yeah, a little bit on how they sleep. First of all, cows don't sleep standing up. They actually do lay down, they go to sleep. A cow can appear to be sleeping, but a cow's just very chill. Yeah. It's like he's on weed. So you're not really man. cow tipping a cow that's asleep. If you happen to knock over a cow that's standing, you just knocked over a standing cow. <laughs> you could have done that during the day, buddy, and or saved stomping just, through the night. You knocked over a dying cow. I yeah. mean, there's no way. Because <laughs> you don't have the brute force to knock over. You know how much a cow weighs? And they're, they're well, center of gravity. I dated, I dated a girl. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Like, it's, it's like it's not possible. You can't. And first of all, if you try to sneak up on a standing cow at night, they're going to hear you. Crouching gonna... tiger, <laughs> sleeping cow. No, the cow no. will just move. <laughs> move. I get it. Move. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so nobody's ever been cow tipping. It's all a myth. If anybody tells you that, oh, no, no, but seriously, no, my buddy really did, did go. No, he didn't. These jokes are getting a little skim. <laughs> These jokes, man. The jokes are getting oh, a little skim. skim. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I wish I could cut that out, but I'm not going to. <laughs> no, don't. It's staying. Yes. I'll let our listeners burn with me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nobody's ever been cow tipping. Huh. So nobody's ever successfully been cow tipping. I, I have a funny story. Now, I don't know if this is true. I think I, I don't know if I told this on another show or not. My uh, my father told me a story. And now I'm from North Carolina. I was born in North Carolina, but I lived in here in Florida, in Central Florida, for about 25 years. Other than going over to seas for whatever. Um, my father used to live in towards the mountains of North Carolina. He was a good old boy. Yeah. And, uh, he and his buddies had a bunch of land and farms, real farms, like raising cows and raising chickens and whatever, all that shit. Well, my buddies, there wasn't a whole lot to do in the mountains. So my buddies, my, my dad was telling me a story about him and his buddies out on the farm 
Um, and what they would do at night to entertain themselves is go out and literally ignite cow farts. Now, understand. I've, I've heard about this. Methane out of a cow is like exponentially more than what you and I are going to release. And our methane, just like a cow's methane, is very flammable. You've seen the, 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 Videos of guys, you know, in jeans or something, lighting their farts on fire. Oh, yeah. I had a buddy do it before at a yeah. party. Yeah, yeah. Well, my dad's not a story. good idea, by the way. Yeah, no, I don't encourage I've seen that it at all. And <laughs> don't yeah. try this at home. No, don't. Yes. It could be. Uh, it's a good way to remove hair if that's what you're wanting <laughs> to do. My dad tells a story about him and his buddies drunk as shit on mountain moonshine. Literally, they had they did their own stills and everything <laughs> uh, out on his farm. Lighting cow farts on fire, and he and his buddies were sitting up on the fence next to the trucks. Were these NASCAR Americans? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they, I don't even think they were NASCAR Americans. They were just redneck country NASCAR boys. Americans. Yeah, I guess <laughs> no, that's a good point. Go ahead. Meets that demographic. Um, <laughs> and one of their bunny, buddies, Henry. Henry is a, about the, the, the most badass of the country boys. That oh, doesn't shit. exactly say a lot. That meant out of the IQs, his was 89, which was the highest. <laughs> right. Um, he goes down and he gets ready to light this cow's you know, fart on fire. And the cows fart all the time while they're at night, you know, chewing cut or whatever the fuck they're doing. And uh, these are milking cows, so they're used to, you know, people handling them. Well, how you would do it is go up and grab the tail, lift the tail up, and literally just stand there with a match until the cow would, would fart. And apparently you could listen for a rumble in the belly just like we get, and then, you, you know, you've got a good prime. Well, Henry was down there with his big fucking heifer, and... <laughs> Sure enough, he held the match out, and this is late at night. Got my dad and his buddies were up on the fence, sitting up there waiting for him, watching him down in the field with this cow. The cow he lights the the lighter or lights the match, or whatever he had. The cow farts and it shoots a flame like a foot out, which is about what they were shooting him out apparently. But then all of a sudden, the flame disappears. Yikes! Well, how I guess he was holding the tail, and how the the mechanisms of this cow's digestive system worked. The flame pulled inside of the cow. Oh, shit. Like it literally sucked right back in the cow's ass, back into the stomach of the cow, or into the lower intestines of the cow. Right. And all that you could hear, according to my father, you know, allegedly, was this right. cow moo scream. You know, and it would run about 30 feet, and then it fell over and died. Oh my God, it literally terrible. blew the cow up from the inside. And, I mean, you didn't blow up the cow. It wasn't like a giant cow explosion. Right, right. But it sucked the fire back into its internal system and fucked it all up from the inside. And they killed the That's cow. terrible. Is that bad? Is PETA going to hate me for telling that story? <laughs> <laughs> That's I liked terrible. It. I, I, I thought it was... It's entertaining, know. but it's so Is sad. that like a, how a convec- convection oven works? You cook it from the inside <laughs> out? <laughs> Just kidding. Number six, no. Number six? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Yeah, so. So number six of the top ten things you thought you knew that were facts, but really turned out not to be according to Tack on the Twisted Ten. <laughs> we're going to keep increasing the size of this title, by the way. <laughs> More T's if possible. Uh, T's and A? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Um, This one is actually not just, not only just false, but it's also just good it's good information to have. Okay. Okay. You're going to teach us a thing or I'm two. Here. Teach you something. It's educational could, lesson could save someone's life. Hey, welcome back to NPR today on <laughs> education lesson with TAC. <laughs> and we may save lives. So everybody, listen up. Oh boy. Okay. Don't like cow farts on fire. No, I'm just don't kidding. do that. On television and movies, they like to talk about. They always like to say, "Well, you can't report someone missing until they've been missing for 24 hours." 24 or 48 or something like that, yeah. right? It's not true. Huh. They, they, the police say, if they're missing, report it immediately. Like, do not wait 24 hours. Because, I mean, that... Yeah, you always see that on, like, Law and Order or yeah, you know, yeah. Criminal Minds or something. No, nah, it's the first 48 even. I mean, that's yeah. a good... Unless it's a child or an elderly. You know, like, no, no. Anybody. Do not wait 24 hours. Huh, okay. Report it immediately. So if my uh, if my blind date doesn't show up for like 10 <laughs> minutes, I'm going to call in the cops saying, hey, this bitch didn't show. She's <laughs> missing. Show. She would definitely not stand me up. So she's got to have been abducted. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm, I'm making a joke of that. But that's if that's true, that's serious, serious information <laughs> right. to share. Right. And that's like that's 24 hours of missing time that could have been used in searching for this person. That's 24 hours of the abductor to get 24 hours away. Further away, you know, I mean, that's... 
Huh. It's terrible. So report yeah. the missing people. Here in Florida, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's national or not, but I know in here in Florida we have the Amber Alert system. Is that now national? I I assume I always assumed it was national. Amber Alert system's pretty cool. So I watched a, a special with uh, my girl on the Amber Alert and the story where it actually came from. It was from a little girl named Amber. And oh, nice. the Amber Alert began with her. It didn't begin with her. It was a system developed by her family after her abduction. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they got her back. I don't know the whole story behind it. I didn't watch it. It was a lifetime show and I fucking hate those. But the point is. <laughs> did it have Meredith Baxter Burney in it? I, I don't. Was that English? What did you say? <laughs> what? Did it have Meredith Baxter Burney in it? I didn't. I don't know who that is. Are you, you said, kidding me? You said three first names there. <laughs> 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 she used to be on uh, fucking Family Ties. That's no. like saying Adam Tack Ron. <laughs> Who? Don't you know the him? He's a famous actor, Adam Tack Ron. What? <laughs> she does a lot of like Lifetime movies. Anyway, moving oh. on. Go ahead. All right. Uh, is that same with the uh, Samantha? That girl? Samantha. Yeah, her. No, no. That's, she's on a lot of those weird movies, who's too. the boss. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a few women I, that do all these movies. I, I respect shows like Bernelli that. Valerie does a bunch, too. L- Lifetime and the Wii Entertainment Network uh, yeah. kill me, and there's two reasons why. Well, really, yeah, two reasons. One, it's always the guy that's done something wrong, all right? Always. Yeah, yeah. However, there are a few shows that the girl's crazy and murders and does whatever, but they always tie it back to dad well, or somebody because, did something yeah, bad to her. Right. It was a guy that fucked uncle, her up in her life. Yeah. yeah. Uncle, like, diddled her in the closet when she was a kid Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. yeah, but I, Damn, I was thinking works. about this. Uh, unless, uh, well, I'm sorry, Tack, I didn't mean to unless uh, We Entertainment or Lifetime Entertainment would like to sponsor the twisted 10 <laughs> then i right. recant everything i just said no i'm kidding <laughs> um what uh i was thinking about this recently like that's gotta be i mean you're a parent that's gotta sure. be the worst thing imaginable like to have your child abducted yeah no kidding that is awful it's not like the kid you know your child like have you ever had that, a car accident or something? You ever had that like away. mini feeling like when you're at the park or something and you turn your back and all of a sudden, poof, your kid is like run off to another playground area and you didn't something follow them? Similar. And, I've had something oh, similar happen. It scared the shit out of me. Dude, your heart just starts. Yeah. But can you going. imagine like like your kid has been abducted? It's been 24 hours now. And, <laughs> and you're you watching your, your child. I can't. I now can't call. Afford. I can't call it's yet. Twelve forty-seven now. <laughs> One more minute. <laughs> I get to call. Hello, no. police. <laughs> but I mean, like your child's been missing for twenty-four hours now. It's not just you know lost in the store. Your child now is completely abducted, and you have no idea where who they're with if they're even still. That's gonna be the worst thing in the yeah, world. Yeah, no kidding. That's I can't even. I mean, I tried imagining that. And whatever we can imagine probably didn't come close to what yeah. these parents actually Sympathy and through. empathy are two different things, and there's it's no way. It's horrible. I could not imagine my son being abducted like that and possibly be tortured. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. I don't even like it when he, like, stubs his little toe or something like that. You yeah. Know? I'm just like, oh, my God, my baby, you know. But, oh, my God, and somebody deliberately doing something. Yep. Oh, my. And you know. I can't were, imagine that. You know they wouldn't be after me for money, so. Yeah. that has got to be something worse than that. Right. I'd give them everything I got. But it ain't going to be a yeah, whole lot. It's just, I got a couple terrible. of podcast microphones, some studio equipment. That's <laughs> right. about all. You want my debt? You can have that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, so let's take a break. All right. Well, we, so we finished 10 through 6. Yeah, we got 10 through 6 completed. Uh, right. We got a lot more coming up. A few. One's topical. Oh, boy. So that'll create some discussion. You mean more topical than twisting the... 24 hour into how much Adam hates Lifetime and we. Okay. Got <laughs> yeah. it. And one's topical. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So there's more to come. Like toppings you put on top of ice cream topical? <laughs> Something like that. Wait and find out. After Wait this, what after happens break. next will amaze you. I hate those fucking things. <laughs> you won't right. believe on the next five. You won't <laughs> believe what number three is. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our new sponsor, Last Drop Vape. They make a premium e-liquid line that is simply fantastic. I vape a lot and use Last Drop Vape's blueberry and strawberry cream. They also have a chocolate that is spot on. All of Last Drop Vape's premium e-liquids are proudly made in the USA. Their e-juice is bottled in a clean, certified laboratory using 100% FDA compliant machinery, meeting AEMSA standards and future FDA regulations. Visit them at lastdropvape.com or on Facebook at facebook.com slash lastdropvape. If you are interested in becoming a distributor, you can contact them at their website under the wholesaler section. Hey, 
and welcome back. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Was that the? That wasn't. That wasn't Ron cheesy. Okay. Ron's is welcome back. And or, we're back. And we're back. <laughs> That's Ron's. That's our buddy Ron from uh, from Unsquish the Fish. He used to host Living Pod Curiously with us up here a while ago. So <laughs> he's he's a great guy. If you like sports podcasts, um, his is specifically regarding Miami Dolphins fan base podcast. <laughs> uh, take a listen. Unsquish. Unsquish the fish Unsquish on the fish. iTunes, Stitcher, uh, at Unsquish the fish on Twitter. So check them out. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Just saying it. Indeed. Let's talk about uh, learning curves. Damn, I, I thought you were going to say sex, baby. So let's talk about you. All and right. Me. Let's talk about all, all the, the good, good things and, and the, the bad things that we be. be. Let's talk about sex. <laughs> okay. Talk um, better day jobs. Got it. <laughs> So let's talk about learning curves. Um, you've always had that person in school or maybe person in the family, whoever, who's got that, quote, photographic memory. Right. You've heard about those people? Or yeah. pentagraphic. Pe- pentagraphic. Pet- pentagraphic? Whatever. Yes, continue. <laughs> Sorry. Well, apparently, a photographic memory does not exist. Huh. Um, what they're calling it is eidetic memory. Eidetic. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Well, I was way off. <laughs> But that's not like, cause people claim they have photograph memories means they remember everything they read or whatever. People claim that. Well, now, are you ruling out the savant level of eidetic? Well, we're going to get into that. We're okay. going to get into that. Okay. Photographic memories don't exist. Um, where they're saying that you remember everything you read or whatever. Okay. Not to be confused with eidetic memory. Now, eidetic memory. Now, eidetic memory is something that children have when, at a very young age where they have the ability to remember very specific details of an image uh, for several minutes after seeing it. Okay. Much more so than an adult can. More than your typical, yeah, hypo, uh, what's short-term memory? Hippocampus? Hippocampus. No, that's what I'm transfers sure. short to long. All right. Irrelevant. Um, and uh, so the reason, they're saying the reason for that is because this is before um, that child learns to read to all these other th- new things that were added into our brains. Okay. Cause right as a young child, everything is pictures. Information processing. All right. Yeah. yeah it makes sense. Pictures and visuals and things like that. So it's easier for them to remember visuals of things. As you get older, you lose that as the more things you learn as far as reading and stuff like sure. that. Sure. Um, now there's also those special cases like you were talking about the savant cases and things like that. There's something called. Highly superior autobi- autobiog- shit. autobiographical. Thank you. Highly superior autobiographical memory, or HSAM, is what it stands for. And those are, they're not really considered savant so much. It's just there's a very select few people. <laughs> Sorry, I was I was trying to pull up an audio book that I've been listening to <laughs> to reference this specific material. So. Mm-hmm. Continue. I was, gotcha. I, I was uh, doing some show prep tack. It wasn't. <laughs> okay. um, H. Sam, and there's like, and these are people, these are not so much savants, but I guess they could be considered, I guess. These are people that can remember every single day of their life. Like yeah. every detail. You can say on June 24th, 1981. What happened to you? What happened to you? Like, well, I was wearing these clothes. That was on a Tuesday. This yep. is what happened on that day. That's ironic for you to say that. So the book I was pulling up that I so rudely <laughs> interrupted us with. Um, is a book from the greater <laughs> courses. It's an audio book and it's also, also a hardback book as well. Um, professor John J. Medina, Dr. John J. Medina, um, authored and narrated this book called your best brain in that it's not a plug for them. They aren't advertising. This is just a book right. that I listened to and, and absolutely loved. Um, that book references a woman who has a really unique ability mm-hmm. to remember the food she ate. By detail, that what she consumed mm-hmm. any day of her entire life when she was able to have cognitive memories. So from like five, from the age of five and on, or mm-hmm. whatever the hell he references it in the book. Um, and they they tested her. So they thought she was full of shit, and they tested her. So they put her into a bunch of studies, gave her various foods, and then several years later, the same professors with the you know recording of the information that they had. Went back and they did this over months. So this wasn't like, okay, you're, we're going to test you on this day and you could commit that to memory. This was over right, months right. and months and months over the study was over months and months. Mm-hmm. And they asked her what she had years ago when they were doing the study and she nailed it. I mean, down to the T perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. They had, um, 
There's not like this is uh I think they were saying there's something like in the United States there's like some are a really low number like less than 50 people that can do this in the states. It's bigger than you would think, I guess. Okay. But um there's like some of these people like they had them I watched this little thing uh today this new story and they had a few of them in and they were interviewing with and they would sit them down and be like, "Okay, um and they would pick a random date. Like what happened on this day in June 24 2010 and they were all just like oh that's the day that uh you know um well, xyz prince happened, yeah. ha- prince freaking harry or whatever married so-and-so what's, huh. her, what's her head whatever here we are what about this day oh that's the day this happened or that's the day the hudson river crash you know or and they can remember everything that happened on those and they could say what day it was you know what day of the week and and it was just kind of neat because they were all like wanting to talk at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know it. You know, it was kind of those little smarties in class. Yeah. Know? The savants, though, unfortunately, the savants have often, <laughs> Austin, have often had difficulties in other areas where their brain is it's super advanced in certain areas of memorization or, you know, task uh, uh, procedures or, or whatever. Like playing the piano, for example, a savant in, in musical talent can can easily pick that stuff up. Certain savants have the ability to play musical instruments, but they lack basic neuro ability to communicate. They can't speak or they can't, uh, they don't, uh, take social cues very well or any number of things. This particular savant couldn't dress herself. That's, that's one of the difficulties that she had. She couldn't do basic tasks like, you know, tie her shoes or put her shoes on or understand which left and foot, left foot meant and right foot, foot meant. Putting on pants was difficult for her. So, some savants have such a serious disability in some areas, but a super advanced ability in others. And that's just, mm-hmm. that all has to do with how the, you know, neuroreceptors are firing in her brain. And the interesting thing with, thing with most people is, let's say, Tack, if you wanted to start teaching yourself, um, uh, rhythms in the morning. All right. So let's say every morning you get up, you take a shower, you use the facilities, then you have a certain order. You brush your teeth. Yeah, I mean, you don't really have a whole lot of hair, so you don't have to style your hair or anything, but you do certain things in certain orders. Right. And that's your routine. That's what you do every day mm-hmm. when you're prepping yourself to go somewhere. And most of the time, you do that without cognitively thinking about it. Well, right. you can change those patterns in the mornings by adding something in every time you start to do it cognitively at first. So let's say you wanted to also... um I don't know, pick any fucking mundane task that has nothing to do with what you do in the morning. Um, um, trade a stock. All right, let's just pick okay. that. All right, so every morning you now are teaching yourself cognitively for the first few months of this, you're going to go out, find an IPO and buy one share of any IPO that's out there just to you know teach yourself a new habit to do every morning. Mm-hmm. Well, you're teaching your brain a new set of uh, synapses to fire in the morning, but after so much time, those synapses that fire together literally wire together. I know it sounds funny, but in neuroscience, what fires together, wires together is actually a, a, a common term that's used. April would be kind of proud of me for that because of my little, <laughs> my little neuroscience side of me. Um, if you teach yourself that those, those mechanisms in your brain start to work regularly pretty soon, you're not even thinking about it. So you as a normal person with normal functioning, uh, neurosynapse firings can teach yourself new habits that you can start to do non cognitively. Well, with people with savants, that is almost impossible to do. They're wired in a way that those fire together, wire together tasks just don't happen. It doesn't happen that way. But they can listen to one piece of, you know, Mozart that they've never heard mm-hmm. before and then immediately reproduce those notes perfectly. So yeah. how their brains work is just so much different than some of ours. Yeah, I've seen uh, documentaries about that. I saw this one guy, uh, um, his name, I, I think his name is Stephen Wiltshire. He's a guy that he can look. Um, I guess what he did was he went on a tour around New York City, a helicopter tour, and just drove around the city and then came back and then drew a map of the city in perfect detail just from that one. Wow, moment, really? Just from memory, just from looking at that. I mean, the drawing was huge. He drew this on the wall. It's actually really good. Huh. And uh, he just a pencil drew the entire city layout. 
Um, and it was just beautiful drawing and just, he did it all from memory and he's one of those savants, you know, okay. where he, where he lacks in other skills, yeah. but excels in this kind of yeah, stuff. It's really weird. He shits everywhere, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, <laughs> but a beautiful fucking drawing. Yeah. So, but damn, he's got to put up with the smell. <laughs> um, so with your, so this number, that was number five, right? Yes. So with the five. exception of savants, that's was going to be your one little asterisk there. Yeah. yeah with yeah. the exception of savants, the typical person. Yeah. cannot have photographic no. or eidetic memory as an adult, as a normal functioning adult. Right. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So Sheldon on Big Bang Theory, you're a liar. <laughs> you know that before Well, we, no, he, now listen, he's got, I think he's got Asperger's. Oh, that was, was exactly what I was going to say. Before yeah. we hop to another topic, the theory behind his character on there, he portrays the almost perfect examples of what a person with Asperger's has. Yeah, exactly. Inability to understand social cues. Advances mm-hmm. in certain parts of development, yeah. mind development, um, right. uh, issues with heat and cool. Cause he always talks about his seat is in the perfect spot to catch the draft right, and whatever. Right, right. So he's got extreme temperature issues, mm-hmm. um, the inability to want to be touched, uh, you know, physically. He doesn't yeah. like that those, those feelings, certain types of clothes that he has to wear. Those are all, I, you know, exactly what, well, not exactly, but the stereotype for the majority of, uh, people with Asperger's mm-hmm. experience. Yeah, um, one exactly of the things right. that's really interesting about, especially children with Asperger's, the best environment to put them in where they are the most comfortable, usually, mm-hmm. is either in a pool or diving. So diving, mm-hmm. especially diving controls oxygen flow. So you have the same intake of oxygen the whole time. So how you're breathing, your breathing mechanism works really well. And the temperature of the water has, is the same temperature across your entire skin. And you're, it's either always a compression suit or nothing at all. Like you're, if depends on where you're, you're diving. If you're in warm enough water, right. the temperature is always the same. You don't have constant changing temperatures or friction of things like clothes that would drive a, a person with Asperger's just batty because that, that difference in texture feel, they feel all the time where me and you get used to it after a few minutes. They feel that constant tug and irritation on their skin. Hmm. So diving or, or submersion in a pool is really peaceful for somebody with Asperger's. Interesting. Yeah, they do sleeping studies with them, put them in full diving gear, put them in the bottom of the pool, and they get some of the best sleep that they've ever had because their body is completely relaxed <laughs> with all that oxygen and that constant temperature. So, boy, I diverged off that a little bit. Sorry. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. Okay, let's see here. Number four. Number four on the top ten things that Tack found on the internet that we all <laughs> thought were true, but... Actually, it turned out not to be true according to Tack from Twisted Ten Tack. I'm <laughs> going to keep increasing the length of the title. Tack, tack, two, 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 two. <laughs> All right, let's go with, let me ask you a question. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Who discovered that the world was round? Hmm. Copernicus. <laughs> I don't know. Copernicus. You know, the 1492. Well, I'm not going to say it's Christopher Columbus. I would uh, imagine it was before Christopher Columbus. but Right, but I thought you were playing the role of the... Oh, uh, the advocate of the listener. <laughs> Christopher Columbus. <laughs> In no. 1492, he sailed the ocean blue. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Yeah, but that well, was to discover America, not to figure out that the world was not flat. That was a... That was an explorer. No, his goal was to go from, uh, what was it, this to this, and you know, it was government funded, and all this kind of crap. I don't know. I'm not getting Christopher Columbus, because right. that guy is a piece of shit, but whatever. <laughs> Rapist. Yeah. Pillager. I don't know why we celebrate a, a day for that guy. Yeah, anyway. that should have been number four. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we all credit him to discovering the world was round. Right. You know, which, you know, the world's not flat, which is complete bullshit. He's yeah. not the first one to discover it. In fact... It was discovered, or at least it was uh, accredited to originally. Uh, the Greeks had discovered it. Can you guess how long before him? Man. You just had to guess. I was shocked. I know that there was people that had discovered it before him, but not. So the Greeks were prior to, a long time prior to the medieval times. So I would say 900 AD. Way further back than that. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. We're talking at 600 BC. 600 BC. No 600 shit. BC. You're talking the time between now and the birth of Christ is a shorter time period than it was between Columbus and when the Greeks discovered it. Huh. It's crazy. Yeah, no kidding. That's nuts. <laughs> you know, it's like it was over 2,000 years before. Yeah, but those Greeks, <clears throat> yeah, you know, 
They drank the wine and nobody believed them. Uh, they had a bridge <laughs> they wanted to sell you down the road. Yeah, yeah, those are the Greeks. <laughs> the best thing that came out of them is our heroes. <laughs> those are good, though. Yeah, they're pretty good. Heroes, heroes, gyros, gyros, whatever yeah. you want to call them. They're all amazing. Mazel tov. Oh, wait, that's the wrong. Yeah, that's like Jewish. Yeah, whatever. that's the wrong religion. Sect of people. Ah, whatever. <laughs> You're racist. Yeah, did you also hear how they, the, I don't know if it was the Greeks. I, I don't remember. I'm sure I watched this on the History Channel at some point. The person that originally predicted it, at least wrote it down in books for history books, noticed that as the ships would sail off into the horizon, the ships would become harder to see the further away that they would get. It's called hold it, down. Yeah, exactly. Well, you would certainly know I was that. Like yeah. Navy, so. so you only see, you know, as they're not too far off, you see the full boat. And then as they keep going further out, you see just the top of the boat. Then just you the don't see the boat. Then you up. see the mast and the yeah. sails. Then you just see the, the, the bird, the catbird seat. And then you just don't see anything at all. Right. So it's like they're falling off the edge of the earth, but they were just really going around the earth. But, and they're like, whoa, man, where are you going? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, you came back. Like, I could have sworn you were falling off the edge of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all set. That's why uh, radios would have been really helpful back then. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. Um, okay, so you hear, here's another urban legend. This is number three. Number three right, on number the three. top it's ten. Top, tax top ten. Tax I made this one short. Top twisted ten of the. Teddy twisters. Teddy twisters. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we've all heard that urban legend of. You know, the guy wakes up in a bath full of ice with a mysterious yeah. stitches. Yeah, missing a kidney missing with a note kidney. or something. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, apparently there's been no ever record of that ever happening ever. Huh. So it's all simply ur- urban legend. Well, you know, in Russia, they don't keep documents, so <laughs> just saying. Well, nobody's ever ran to the police and go, I don't know what's happened here. I woke up in a bath full of ice. I got stitches now. Wow, you hear that one all the time too, man. That's like a yeah. That's like a go-to urban legend. Yeah, it's also one of those things where you know you want to always want to keep an eye on your drink at the bar, you know, so make sure you're not getting roofied. Yeah, you know, steal a kidney. The people know. that are roofing are wanting your kidneys. They're wanting to rape you. <laughs> just, <laughs> just saying, that's <laughs> just how it works. Yeah, I'm afraid your kidney is not what they're after. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> your virginity. <laughs> it's your virginity. No, they want to get inside you. But yeah, exactly. Not that way. So no reported incidents, no police records of Zero. this ever happening, none of that stuff, huh? Number two, we're going to get into some topical ones. Oh, boy. I'm not sure which one I want to go into. I mean, shit, we've hit cow farts. We've <laughs> hit uh, catbird seat. We've hit uh, how bad Lifetime and we Entertainment are. All right, what else could go wrong? Well, now we're going to hit gluten sensitivity. Huh. Like... You know, sh- people are like... Can I get that gluten free? Oh, gluten. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, gluten sensitivity. Not, not, not to be confused with blood sugar levels and glucose. Well, do you know what gluten is? No. Gluten is wheat. Oh, I've got a great story to tell you about this, but I want, I want you to get through your, your, uh, your point, your factoids. Okay. And then I got a funny, funny story about somebody who claims to be <laughs> glucose intolerant or wheat intolerant. What is it? Is in- gluten. Gluten intolerance. Yeah. Gluten sensitivity is, well, gluten is wheat, and it's like a new fad right now for people to go gluten-free and things like that. Right. Is it more healthy for you, or? Well, people are saying that, well, it's not so much that you're, like, you have a sensitivity to gluten. It's possibly more of, like, the herbicides that are put on the wheat while it's in the fields. Okay. But there's nobody really has any... Now there are people that do have intolerance sensitivity. Yes, okay. that, like that's real, but that's got to be diagnosed by a doctor, and it's, it's very few people have that. It. It's got it. Not as much as what well, people are doing this gluten free crap, which is like a two billion dollar industry to get in this gluten free meals and all that kind of shit. It's ridiculous. Huh. Um, Why wouldn't you want gluten? What does gluten do for you that people don't want it to be in their body? Um. It's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I didn't find that part out. Um, I understand having intolerances to certain things, and you, if right. you eat it, you go into shock or you fucks up your system or something. I got that. Yeah, but uh, that's what people are claiming, and they're going on this gluten free diet, which is something new that just started within the past like ten years. Yeah, or so. I, I know, I because I have you never see you know gluten levels even being mentioned in anything until recently, right? And that's what people are pointing out. They're saying. 
We've been eating this way for thousands of years. Yeah, wheat's now, kind of a normal part of our diet. Yeah, and now people are claiming to be wheat intolerant or wheat sensitivity, which is ridiculous. Um, now, there's also something called Cialic disease, which is, that's real. Does that mean you can't take that drug Cialis to have boners? <laughs> Isn't that I'm what sorry, Cialis is for? That's Cialis, Cialic. Cialic, oh. Cialic disease. And that's real. That's people that can't eat wheat or barley or rye. And you're talking only like 1% of the population that has this. Huh. Um, See, I thought you, I thought that meant you couldn't watch Jeopardy. <laughs> just, oh, no, that's Alex, not Alec. Because you couldn't see Alex if you had. Sorry, Tech. I'll stop <laughs> fucking with you. <laughs> but a gluten free diet is not a thing, it's a fad diet that some dude out there invented and he's making billions of dollars on. And uh, huh. it's not that worth make, it. You know, that makes a little bit of sense because the guy that told me this, what the story I'm about to tell you, is kind of a douche and would probably fall for a fad like that. But uh, so I was working in a government facility over in Tampa. I won't get into the details of the facility. Okay. Um, and I was a manager of a team of about 35 people at the time. And a guy who was not necessarily a, a boss of mine, but he was higher than me just on a different chain of command. Um uh, often would come into our area and just ask how things are doing. And we didn't have to report to him, but he was just trying to, you know, keep the peace. He, we were working late one night. This is like six thirty, seven 7 o'clock, something like that in, in a building that usually works nine to five. This guy came in the office and came up to me just to check on the team and see how we were doing. And we were doing all right. No, no big story there. I always like to have snacks around my desk. So I had, you know, M&Ms and crackers and, you know, whatever, all the shit. And I happened to have a pack of crackers open. Well, I am a very generous person. I always like to share. If I have anything, I share it with my friends and those around me. That's just the kind of guy I am. This is relevant to the story for me to point this out, so I'm going to point it out. This gentleman was an African-American guy, black guy, Mm -hmm. and it is relevant, so I I am pointing this out for that reason. So, again, 6.30, 7 o'clock at night, got an office full of my staff in there, you know, they supposedly respected me as a boss. Who the hell knows if they really did or not, but whatever. (laughs) Right. So we're sitting there and up comes this guy and he comes up to my desk and he's just asking me how everything's going and I'm telling him good and I offer him some crackers. He's like, no, 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 I, uh, I don't, I don't want any. I appreciate that. I'm like, sure, man, I got like four packs here, you know, more, more than happy to share because I know he didn't need anything that day. And, uh, he's like, no, Adam, no, I appreciate it. And then we kind of, I thought it was kind of funny. So I'm like, no, really, I insist. <laughs> right. And he's a very formal man. Not, he doesn't crack jokes or anything, you know, at all. But uh, he looks at me, and again, office full of my staff, as well as a couple government guys, you know, enlisted folks. Yeah. And he looks at me, and in front of everyone there, big tall black guy, Adam, I don't like crackers. <laughs> with the accent, with the southern, you know, draw on it and everything. And my eyes just got wide-eyed, and my guys just sort of twisted around to see what the fuck was going on. And he, then he told me, he goes, no, man, I'm just kidding. I'm glucose intolerant. I'm like, oh, or no, I'm, I'm a gluten. Uh, gluten intolerant. And I'm like, oh, my God, you fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> That's awesome. But he said it so stereotypically racist. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like crackers. I'm like, oh, man. Why you got to do that to me? I was awesome. already having a stressful night working late and he's got to. Yeah. But you know what? That guy was a douche, so I would believe he fell for the fad of, of <laughs> gluten intolerance. But, uh, to answer your question, though, I, I researched this. What because you asked, what are your benefits of yeah. being gluten free? Apparently, it's a it's a good way to lose weight. Allegedly, so if you cut out wheat, you're cutting out carbs. Yeah, right. It's, it's, carbs is the way to go. I mean, yeah, just cut out carbs. But people are specific for some reason with gluten. I don't know why. As I was a kid, wheat was always a healthier choice than going with standard. Right. Like, you don't want to, you know, we can't get Wonder Bread. We got to get wheat bread. You know, it's it's healthier. When you go to T, so look, I know this isn't the litmus of health, but when you go to Tijuana Flats, you can either have flour tortilla shells or you can have wheat tortilla shells. Wheat's supposed to be healthier. Right. Well, no, I guess, I guess not. I guess I'm going to get myself some wheat tortilla shells from now on. (laughs) They're supposed to be more unhealthy. Gluten free shit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Bullshit. Uh, I love me some Tijuana Flats. <laughs> All right. So now let's move on to the last one, number one. Number one of the top ten things Tack found on the internet that have to do with people thinking they're true, but they're really not. 
I don't know how the hell we're going to label this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. Good luck. Um, now, this one's topical. This may cause some uh, arguments. Okay. Because there's some people that really fight for this and believe this to be true. Religion. I knew it. I knew where you were going. With- no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's not religion. But that people, was episode people one. People act like it is. It's the whole uh, vaccines over autism. Oh, debate. boy. All right. Uh, where's Jenny McCarthy when you need her? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I got two things to say about this. First of all, there's no scientific proof that links vaccines to autism. Right. Okay. Not That's an important Let's statement. Let's just say that No there scientific was. proof. Right. Let's that's pretend important. that there was. And let's also pretend that it's a very small, small group of, p- of kids that do develop autism from vaccinations. Okay. Let's just say that that's true. But isn't that better than polio or the <laughs> yeah, black exactly. plague? Well, it's just like the flu shot. Some people, these, like, some people get the flu shot from the flu. I, I mean, <laughs> some people get the flu from the flu shot. Well, that's right? what it is. It's a little bit of flu. Yeah. So he gets the antibodies in there and he can fight off the major flu that could happen. Yeah. That's the whole point of it. And like, I mean, why risk the life of your child and as well as the people around by having your child not get, get these vaccinated d- diseases that haven't been around for a hundred years. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, she's, by the way, that particular woman has switched her stance on, on vaccinations. Really? She's, she's back to pro vaccination. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank she, God. well, she was getting too beat up because of having no scientific proof and her, her entire perspective was based on hokum. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. I mean, they're linking autism to maybe some sort of diet. I've heard that. There's some truth in there. I don't know hmm. for sure, though. That's interesting. I don't know. I don't really know much about autism, to be honest with you. Um, I've known some friends of mine that have children that have autism. Uh, I know this one guy who's had it. You know, so I've been around it a little bit. But sure. I don't know enough about it to really talk about it. Um, yeah. I don't well, want to offend anybody. No, I agree. Know. And, you know, ignorance in our situation here, other than just reading some stuff on the Internet, we don't, can't actually speak from life experiences other than we've right. both had our children vaccinated right? and the scientific evidence that supports pro vaccination as opposed to anti vaccination or the non vaccination movement is right. so one sided. It doesn't, I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous. There is no scientific evidence that supports their theories. So the, that being the people who don't think you should have your children vaccinated because it can make them sicker. Um, yeah, dude, I, it, it, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. I mean, I've been in third world countries with some of the work that I've done. Mm-hmm. And let's just say you have a new appreciation for what you call home. When you go to some of these countries and see children or families or men and women or whatever, or especially elderly that don't even have the luxury of having the opportunity to be vaccinated. What costs you either under your insurance or not, maybe if you're even paying out of your pocket, if you even have the ability to walk down to your clinic and, you know, ask them for the vaccinations and often they give them to you for free. If you can't, if you don't have any kind of, you know, financial support, uh, that's the U S everywhere else in the world. And I don't say everywhere, but a lot of third world countries don't, no, they they don't have anywhere to go. There's not even an option to go to a right. pharmacy or whatever. The closest pharmacy in some of those places, especially in South America, is hundreds and hundreds of miles away to get any kind of shot. So seeing the the absolute arrogance and ignorance of these people that are anti-vaccinations when the rest of the world is really suffering and would right. would kill for their kids and to have the vaccinations can... that they're fighting against mm-hmm. – boggles my mind. I mean, it's not just vaccinations. I mean, there's so many opportunities in this country. People are literally dying to come over here. Yep. And a lot of people just take for granted. I'm not going to mention any groups of people, hippies, Take, but, you know. (laughs) Or takes advantage of our country. Right, or take advantage, or, I mean, I'd rather them take advantage of it than, like, try to, like, you know, well, fuck America, you know, whatever. Like, you don't realize how good you have it here. Yeah. Go live in one of these third world countries. See how good you have it there. Yeah, exactly. Go live, go grow up in Iraq as a teenager. Yep. And see what it's like to grow up there. You can't even, like every day you walk around with your, you know, um, um, freaking, uh, yeah, slipknot t-shirt with comfort and joy, you would get shot or arrested for in Iraq. Yeah. You know, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, dude. I completely agree. There's something I wanted to say on top of the, uh, on top of the vaccination. And I've tried to say this to my kids when they complain about the stupidest things. You don't know how good you have it? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, but to a, to a teenager, I know it sounds dumb, but I mean, I'm talking about like much bigger things. Yeah, you know, like, well, my, you know, well, even the smallest bullshit, you know, like, well, my fucking internet is, you know, whatever. But I mean, even sm- bigger things I've had to explain to one of my daughters is like, you're giving up an opportunity that there's people literally dying to have that, and there would be a million girls in the world that would trade places with you in a heartbeat, mm-hmm. and you're just blowing it off. Yep. You know, to a teenager, it's it's difficult to. <laughs> Um, explain life style situations that are different from their own because their experiences have only taught them what they know. Their ability to draw on empathy from other parts of the world is almost impossible. That's for kid, boys and girls, and especially in adolescence. I'm more upset. I'm not so upset with teenagers that don't appreciate what they've got. I'm more upset at the parents that are, you know, n- not taking care of their children and they know better. You know what I mean? They're old enough to know that what their children have the opportunity to take advantage of in this country or they can give to their kids <laughs> is there, and they're just not doing it. All right. So that was my top ten list. It was a good list. The Twisted Tens things that were not true. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so the Twisted Tens top ten things you thought were true but really weren't. Yeah. All right. That. Yeah. That's the list I put You together. ended on vaccinations. I can't wait to see some of the – uh some of the messages we get for that. I That's going to be We're going to have hate mail. Aren't yeah, we? we are. I love it. You know what? Any, come, oh. any press is good press. Right. <laughs> well, cool. So if any of you guys out there have any ideas for lists or maybe you would possibly want to be a host and bring your own list on the show, let us know. Definitely. At, well, we don't have a. Yeah, we don't have an email address yet. Uh, stay <laughs> tuned. Insert, <laughs> insert address here. Maybe on Facebook. Probably facebook.com slash the twisted 10. I'll make most a, likely. I'll make a page. I meant to do that a while back. But, well, I don't have a logo done yet, so I don't want to make a page yet. By the time you're listening to this. Yeah. Probably facebook.com slash the twisted 10. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> most likely. Uh, if you have any problems or issues or maybe a complaint or two. Uh, yep. Email us. Let us know. All emails go to tack at thetwisted10.com. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, all boob pics go to adam at thetwisted10.com. No, it's the other way around. Oh, all right. You want my boobs to be emailed to you? <laughs> yeah, I want you to email boobs to me. All right. Um, yeah. Hey, guys, be sure to check out our other shows as well. Um, tack and I also host another show called Living Podcariously. It's a, it's a men's perspective podcast. It's very raw. It's unfiltered, unapologetic. It is a yeah, – it's a lot sorry. of fun. Yeah, right. sorry. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to do. Um, we it's about uh, relationships, sex, love. Yeah, l- hate. little 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 bit of everything. A little um, bit of everything. We've got some guest hosts that are going to come on that show as well. So check that one out at facebook.com slash living pod curiously, or just do a search in iTunes, Stitcher, any of your podcast catching apps out there for living pod curiously. Tack also hosts a uh, hosts another podcast called co host a co co host it with four other guys or three other guys. Yep, it's a comedy podcast called Taint Funny. We discuss uh, movies, television, comic books, video games, music, whatever. Uh, and check it out. It's called Taint Funny. It's also on iTunes, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere uh, podcasts are available to listen to. If you guys get the opportunity for the Twisted Ten, please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes and subscribe. Ironically, iTunes is still the top dog in podcasting yeah, out buddy. there. So uh, please, uh, please give us those reviews. We, we would love to hear your feedback on there. And uh, we can uh, keep paying for the studio to keep bringing these shows if you like them. Yes, sir. Uh, so that's it for today. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode where Adam will bring another original, unique top ten list to the table. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just going to give you a teaser, Tack. Oh, you already got it ready? Uh, yeah, I've already got that one. For the, well, it's for the most part done. Yeah, give me a teaser. Give me a teaser. But I don't want to know what it's about. Let's just say with a telescope as powerful as the Hubble. Yeah. Why don't they just photo the moon? <laughs> I love where this is going. I'm just saying. All right. That's the teaser. All right, guys. Love it, man. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys on the next week's episode. All right. See ya. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, all three engines up and burning, 2, 1,
zero and lift off. Five, ten, three, four. You're listening to the Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique, host created top ten lists recorded live in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Hostin. All right, well, welcome to the Twisted Ten. It's a show where we uh, come up with a unique top ten list of whatever it is that we want to discuss and run through the list. I'm your host, Tack, and with me, as always, across from me is... Trustworthy Adam. I don't like that catchphrase. Uh, Fabulous Adam. I don't like that one either. That's not good. Magnificent Adam? Nah, let's just go with Adam. Let's go with Adam. All right, that'll work. I look like an Adam. (laughs) We have Adam. And so... Every week, we come up with a unique list that each of us, we take turns hosting an episode, and the other one does not have any clue on what list we are bringing to the table. Yeah, that's kind of the fun part about it, is that... Um, So that's an example. This is like, I don't know what you call these, like, facts that we think are true, but aren't? Um... Urban legends, maybe? I guess maybe I, not I, urban legends. I, yeah, see, I fought with this when I was making the list, too. I was like, okay, these are like urban legends that aren't true. I'm like, well, some of these aren't really urban legends, you know? And then hmm. I was like, well, they're facts that... Are they around anything in particular like the brain, like neuroscience studies, or is it no, just kind of a wide array? Yeah, it's a wide array. It's, it's going to have to be urban legends, then, because it's it's if it's something that's <laughs> massively believed uh, to be true and then proven false... Um, urban le- urban legends does kind of lead into another, you know, uh, another genre of topic. It's not right. so much about a couple of these are actually they are in fact urban legends. Some of these are. So let's just go with the top ten things you thought were true, but guess what? They aren't. All right, all right, sounds good to <laughs> me. Right. Cool. I named your show, buddy. <laughs> good you, job. How do you like that shit? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> all right. So this is in no particular order. These aren't in any particular order at all. Okay. Um, but first off. How are things with you? Dude, I can't complain. You know, it's yeah. it's uh, it's another week. I'm uh, enjoying it. Uh, doing good. Our studio is going to get a little bit of revamp in here pretty soon. So we're going to have oh, yeah. a little bit little bit nicer digs. So, uh, yeah. It's, That's exciting. It's going good. I like my new seat, by the way. Yeah. Government for unemployment. Then what the government actually claims is listed as unemployed. Gotcha. So it's a horrible misuse of a statistic. And the administration that we're under right now is the worst about it out there. I mean, the worst. Hmm. But whatever. That's political opinions aside. <laughs> right. A statistical fact is a statistical fact. That's cool. That many Americans aren't working. That's not 5%, buddy. That's like 18% or something. It's, it's a giant number of people between you know the ages of workable age yeah. who are drawing benefits versus who've only been unemployed for six months. So Interesting. I had no idea. Um, yeah. I've never actually ever drawn unemployment before. Um. I've always cashed out. So when I lost my job, I cashed out my 401k and that was enough to carry me for a little bit of time. I did, I've never not worked since I was 18 for more yeah. than, I don't know, maybe two months, I guess. Right. Maybe if that. Yeah. If I was ever unemployed and I needed money, I just went and got a job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's not the, I mean, yeah, no, I got you. Some people are employed, but only in certain industries. Right. Um, uh, therefore they can only find that certain job. Whereas me, Fucking whatever, man. You gonna give me money to do that? I'll do it. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I've taken jobs I probably shouldn't have. That I was extremely overqualified for. Yeah, you're you're stint in the mafia. And I remember that. Granted, they they <laughs> yeah. paid you legitimately, and you know they yeah, well, ten ninety nine you. Know. you. <laughs> That's true. Do you get to claim your? Or are you supposed to claim the other guy doesn't have a clue? And we're we're gonna have some guest hosts in here as well for giving giving bringing their top ten list that they come up with on their own. Now these, the, the unique part about this is they're not like BuzzFeed top ten, so they're not no. you know uh, top ten dot com or what you know none of that shit. They are created by the hosts, surprising the other hosts on the show, and hopefully entertaining somebody out there to listen to you know what we find interesting and no gambit of topics. It's any anything you want to come up with. Anything any, goes. No holds barred. Exactly. Yep. And this is uh, episode three. And so with this episode, with this list I brought today, oh, I really boy. don't know what to call the list. Um, I thought I had a name for it, but then it kind of jumped around. But to give you an example, uh, here's just a sample one, Adam. Okay. This is, is this part of the 10? It's not going to be part of the 10. Not going to be part of the 10. Okay. There's actually more than 10 here, but... I decided to have more here just to, so I can pick and choose. Okay. Um, all right. So you've heard that 
This is just an example one. Okay. That people use, uh, um, we only use 10% of our brain. Yeah. And which that actually is not true at right. all. You know, so right. we it's actually a, use 100% of our brain. Yeah, just the 10% that happens to be monitored while they're doing, <laughs> yes, doing that. Or it's how thing. we choose to use it. <laughs> others seem to use it a little bit better than others. <laughs> Um, You're sporting it over there on a nice couch tonight. Nice couch tonight. I mean, it's not new. It's always been here. I just never sat over here. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, I can't complain. Hey, work's going pretty good. I'm working. I guess that's kind of an important thing to stay, say in these days. Yes, that's... Maybe like, hey, could one of your topics be the number, the level of unemployment? A lot of people think it's 5% as the administration that we currently are under <laughs> is claiming, but really 95 million Americans aren't working. Granted, some of those are too old to work, but... There's some all, of them refuse to work. So th- there's a, yeah, but they fall out of that demographic. So five percent is what unemployment rate is right now, or maybe it's like five and a half or something. So these are people that want to work that just aren't working. Well, people who cannot be hired, if let's say for example, if you get fired tomorrow, then I'm not yep. wishing that. But if you get fired tomorrow and you're on unemployment for six months, would you hear? <laughs> you know something? <laughs> now, if you're looking for a job for like six months and you can't find anything and the economy sucks and you know, your profession is just, you know, overrun in this area, whatever the case is, yep. let's say you can't find employment and you stay on your unemployment benefit for that whole time. At the end of six months, you fall off of the national demographic of unemployed. You're no longer unemployed. You're considered unemployable. So the 5% Ooh. rate changes after your six month period. So how that whole statistic works is fucking political. There is far more yeah. people that are unemployed drawing benefits off of the government.